Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another webinar. We're really excited to have you all here. Today, we're focusing on the Adobe Experience platform. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please throw them in the chat or the Q&A. My name is Sammy Anderson. I'm our marketing coordinator here at Soft Acrylic. If you have any further questions about our services or want to learn more about something you heard in the webinar, again, feel free to put it in the chat and we can reach out to you or you can reach out to us directly at events at softacrylic.com. We also have a new video newsletter coming out. So if that's something that would be interesting to you, we're sending industry tidbits, tips, and insights weekly to your inbox, little snippets of videos, one to three minutes long for you to learn with us and grow with us. So if you'd like to subscribe to that as well, throw a note in the chat and I'll make sure I reach out to you to get you on the list. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the webinar and I'm gonna pass things off to Jerry. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, we have we have the next, hopefully, 45 minutes to an hour, a good session where I brought in the experts, uh, experts who've been helping me uh, working with Adobe's latest and greatest Adobe Experience platform. Just to introduce uh, the fine gentleman that we have on, on the panel today, we got Brad. Brad leads the data science um, practice. Hello, Brad. And uh, he's been very busy working with the data science workspace. So there's a lot of good insights that he's gonna share with us about that specific tool. I'm also bringing Hari. Hari is my right-hand man when it comes to data ingestion. He's been helping us a lot in bringing data into AEP, whether it's Adobe tools or non-Adobe. And a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of uh, finding, learning things along the way, because it, it can be obviously, um, a big step into starting with a with a platform such as AP. And then on the other side, Bupen. Bupen is our API guru. Uh, Bupen has been helping us in getting value out of Adobe IO in general, but also concentrating on how does that work closely with, with AP. So uh, obviously AP is a big topic. It's it's been it's been talked about for years. Uh, it's, it has become a reality, which is super exciting. Uh, we're not going to be able to cover every little detail of EP, but we're hoping that today we'll give you the practitioner point of view. Um, I'm going to start with giving, uh, spend like maybe 10 to 15 minutes giving an overview of what AP is. Um, I'm hoping the folks have some familiarity with it, but just also to set the right stage, just tell you a little bit of what it is. And then we'll go through a bunch of questions. We'll, we'll get talking about AEP and specifics. Uh, please, if you have any questions, put them in the chat or in the Q&A. We're going to try to get to them. This session will be recorded, like Sammy mentioned. And we're going to post it on our site. And we'll also will have a recap. Uh, the one last thing I want to announce before we move into, get into the meat of this presentation or this webinar is that uh, we're planning on having uh, additional sessions around AP. So mark your calendar, 11-11, uh, so November 11, at 11 a.m. It wasn't on purpose. Uh, we're gonna have part two of this webinar. And for that one, we are hosting, we're bringing in a close friend of mine who is behind AP architecture. He's the senior enterprise architect uh, from Adobe, Dave Bilbro who's going to talk about exactly the architecture, how it works, um, and then why this platform is built on uh, the idea that can be scalable, something that Adobe has built from ground up. And then in December, we don't have an exact date yet, but we're bringing in one of our clients who have been using AP for some time, who is going to talk about their experience, what, what, how they, uh, got, what they got out of AP and what they're planning to do with it. All right, so without further ado, let me just share my screen and uh, let me see how I can do that. And we're gonna do step, step two. Okay, Brad, you're able to see my screen okay? Just to confirm. Yes, confirm. we're good. Okay, all right, so let's, um, let's just talk a little bit about what AP is. Um, so if you've worked with Adobe, um, in the past, let's say you've, you've definitely interacted with one of the Adobe tools, uh, whether it's Adobe Analytics or Adobe uh, Audience Manager, any of the, the single point solutions, I would say. And what, what has happened is over, the, over time, uh, the integrations between these tools 
although they worked and they were able to allow you to pass data from one to another, uh, there was some true limitations, true limitations around timing, uh, around uh, the ability to take action in a real time fashion. Um, and at that point, it was, it was one or two things that Adobe was, gonna, was going to do was either to reintegrate these platforms or these tools or create something from scratch. Now, what I think was genius from the Adobe team is that they combined these two things in one. They kept the applications. Uh, so today, even with AEP uh, coming, coming to life, you still have Adobe Analytics and Audience Manager and Target uh, and all these solutions that, you, that you're using today. But these become the front end of the platform. Uh, what the platform introduces is this new layer um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about it, but it's the ability to bring data into a single uh, data lake, uh, in a sense, uh, and then based on that, able to create a unified profile. Now, the idea of unified profile is not, not something new to us or you or Adobe. Uh, till today, Adobe still has a product called Adobe Data Workbench. And actually, my career with Adobe um, I spent six years with Adobe before being here at Subcrylic, um, was working with uh, Data Science Workspace. Uh, no, Data Workbench, they're very close to each other. So, uh, but that, that was, it, it's very powerful, but also had some limitations. And I think that set the, the path for Adobe to create this platform. So what you see here, this is obviously, these are slides that I've acquired from Adobe. I don't take any credit for this. Uh, but the idea here is you still have your applications that are still on top. What is being introduced with AEP is the ability to bring data into a single location, the single location where you create, you have control over the identity. You have control over um, building a custom schema. You're not anymore uh, tied to an email schema or tied to uh, a web visitor schema. You're actually now able to create your custom schema. And the beauty about all this, and, and I think Adobe was true to its word, is that this is not only limited to Adobe data. Yes, Adobe integrations, analytics, Onyx Manager, those are very easy to bring into the, the tool, but also the platform allows you to bring data from anywhere, Salesforce even. Uh, you can bring data from, from Google, from any of the big uh, cloud infrastructures. Even they're creating streamlined uh, connections with some of the pipelines like Kafka and others. So it's really robust. They, I, I feel that Adobe has put in the thought into thinking about how they can ease the process from bringing data in and then build applications on top of it. So let's talk a little bit uh, about what, what that looks like. So this is, this is very similar to, to the previous slide. I just thought it's, it's a little bit simpler to think about it. So you have your platform where um, within it, I would say building your unified uh, profile, and we'll talk a little bit about how you're able to bring data. But then uh, from there, you have specific tools that sit on top of that unified profile. Uh, today, uh, the main uh, ones that are operating uh, is the real-time CDP, um, as well as journey orchestration and customer journey analytics. Uh, there is others that Adobe is working on um, to expand, such as offers and attributions and such. Uh, but today, for this for this specific topic, we're going to concentrate on on the profile with these applications. Now, the beauty about this, and something to keep in mind, is you can still use Adobe Single Point Solutions with the platform. That is crucial to to remember. That the platform does not replace Target, does not replace Analytics. It's actually just giving uh, a way to use these products a little bit differently. Now. You might have heard or you've, you've attended one of our sessions, uh, one of our webinars before, where we talked about something called the Web SDK. Um, I think it's called the Web SDK. I can't keep up with the branding. Uh, but it's using this Alloy um, uh, JS, which is the idea of using the XDM model, which is the experience data model, to collect data. And that, yes, that was built specifically for, for the platform. But eventually, all of these single point solutions are going to move away from their own data collection to use XDM. 
So keep that in mind. Uh, these are two parallel uh, platforms running, uh, but eventually they're going to mer merge together and, and work together. All right. Uh, from a foundation, so a lot of questions I get is, all right, Adobe Experience Platform, it's, there's so much going on. There's all these slides, but how do I step into it? How do I get to use it? Like, do I really need the CDP? Do I need customer journey analytics? Um, and the first thing I always tell my clients is, well, one of the first foundation that you need to do is going to be building this unified profile. Um, some clients today, you might be one of them, you have your instance on your own data lake where you're doing some, some data uh, stitching and you're, you're building your unified, or you could be one of these clients where, and that's okay by the way, where you have 17 different databases, some in, this, in Azure, some in AWS, some with email, and you're really struggling in creating this as much as possible, a customer, a full view of the customer. Uh, Adobe, what they're doing here is saying, okay, let's just concentrate on initially building that foundation. Uh, so with that foundation, I would say the first thing that you will do when you're implementing the platform is uh, bringing data into Adobe's data lake, building the schema, creating this unified profile, and from there on, it's up to you what you want to do with it. You might want to step there. That might be your first year plan to say, this is how far I want to do. But this also can be the first step to do a lot more. OK, what else can you do more using uh, this unified profile? One of the applications is the real-time CDP. Real-time is a very a tricky word. Uh, and I think it needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, because in many cases, we don't really need real time. And in other cases, uh, real time uh, can be within seconds or minutes. Now, uh, what, the, what the CDP here mainly is, is happening is what, what it's doing, it's still taking advantage of the DMP because the DMP is handling still the anonymous connections to all the programmatic advertising, right? To all these channels. It's also managing uh, the relationship with target. Although there is, there is an opportunity for you to move data directly from the platform to target, but if you have audience manager, you can leverage the CDP to activate that way. Uh, what's different ab about the CDP is now you have the ability to bring both the anonymous and the known user with the, with the PII information in an environment that is uh, privacy compliant with every privacy out there. And it's also allows you to, to see the, the combination of these, these two uh, type of, I would say two profiles, whether anonymous or unauthenticated. Now we'll talk, we'll talk about CDP a little bit more later, but looking at the other, uh, the other use or the other application that sits on top of the unified profile. And if you, if you're listening to what I'm saying, there's, it's always based on sitting on the unified profile. So you're not going to do customer journey analytics without first building that profile. A customer journey analytics, the way I would define it is analytics workspace, analysis workspace. And I'm, my guess, a lot of you worked with that um, on steroids, right? The Adobe for years tried to create uh, the capability of stitching data together or stitching users uh, within analytics. And that was hard because it was always causing inflation and causing, you have to reprocess the data. And it, it was hard to keep up with that. So instead, with this offering, with the Unified Profile, now you have the ability to actually see the customer journey that it's stitched. Um, it's beautiful. The same things you can do with journey, with the analysis workspace, you can do it here and even more. Think about attribution in this case. Now you're not limited to any more your web data. You can, whatever data you have, even if you want to bring in your impression data from Google until Google pulls their Google ID, something else will happen. You you have now the environment all in a single place to do more analysis. Finally, um, one of the things that I'm super excited about, and I, I feel this is going to be a game changer, is this journey orchestration idea. 
today, this is this is, in my opinion, it's it's in a good place, but it has a lot of room for growth. Um, the idea of junior orchestration, although it's a standalone product, but it kind of fits within the CDP world because with the CDP, you really want to orchestrate how you want the data to go out. So that's the piece that handles it. Uh, what's beauty, what's beautiful about this one is that uh, also you're operating on the unified profile, but now you have the ability to uh, create a workflow. If you've worked with Adobe Campaign, Classic or Standard, you know the idea of a workflow. The idea to say, pull data from here, and if someone does this, send them this email or send this push notification. Well, with journey orchestration, you're taking this to the complete next level. It's not anymore based on email or push notification. It's not only based on uh, a change in a profile or someone coming to the website. You can actually bring in more events, events that using the pipeline service, these can be events from your own, uh, from your own data store. It can be location for if someone stepped in into your bank and you want to uh, kick a journey for them. That's or someone maybe left your bank. You want to kick a journey, um, or it it could be something where someone called your call center and you integrated the data that is collecting in the call center to pipe it into Adobe uh, Unified Profile, which is updating in a, in a semi real time, and then able to trigger these journeys. So. All in all, I think there is a uh, great opportunities for this platform to make a major impact on any business. Um, obviously, if you if you sit down and talk to me and be like, do we do we buy this today or we wait? I would say make sure you're really uh, ready for the platform. Um, it's not something where you turn on a button or flip a switch and say, okay, we're good to go. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of planning, and also it takes a. It, it, you you need to be ready to get the value out of it. So, uh, and this is something we've been seeing with a lot of our clients. And today, with the panel I brought in, uh, we're going to talk about um, what for each phase of using the this platform, what they have experienced. So let me stop sharing. Bring our panel back and. Um, Let's kick it off. Um, Hari, yep. how you doing, man? Good, good, Jerry. Good, okay, I can hear you. All right, so Hari, we've been, we've been working closely together on data ingestion yep. for some of our clients. Um, and, and I'll be honest, when I, and I've watched so many Adobe videos and I've been there for Summit and whenever they talked about bringing data no one exactly mentioned the details of like, okay, you do A, B, C, and D. And I, I always had that gap of saying, okay, I have my file and I want it here. How do I get there? Um, so Hari, why don't you like tell us a little bit like what needs to happen before you even bring any data into the platform? What would you recommend for people to do uh, in preparation for that? Uh, thanks, Jerry, for the nice introduction you have given on Adobe Experience Platform. And uh, this is very, um, well, like, a good question, like, you know, start up with Adobe Experience Platform. Uh, before starting it, like, you know, the first uh, essential step uh, is, like, governing a common data model. Uh, in many cases, like, it's a very uh, most time-consuming and then challenging process of, uh, like, you know, I list out some common elements and uh, benchmarks. So the first thing is like, you know, so we can gather a spreadsheet across the different teams who can manage a content and marketing data in particular organization. So this is, this gives more insights of the data. So how the data is laid out and what is the different, uh, what is the relationship between the different data points in the organization? So which makes uh, to design a better schema in the Adobe experience platform. So this is the very first step we need to do we sit with the teams and then understand their data. The next is like, you know, uh, if there are any additional uh, external teams uh, working for that particular organization, uh, such as uh, agencies, or uh, they are uh, responsible for creating some campaigns or metadata, whatever. So, so we need to understand, uh, so what are the external sources they have? And uh, you can list out all the solutions and all the use cases to that particular organization and 
include any data related information uh, with the uh, enterprise users. So all this collaborated and so we can create a universal taxonomy elements. Uh, this is a discrete uh, taxonomy elements for that particular organization. So in this way, we'll get a better idea of that particular data in that organization, which makes us to create a better schemas uh, in Adobe Experience Platform. Since the data is growing up and uh, it's coming from the different sources. And uh, so in order to make that, like, you know, the schema is very uh, like uh, good and then it will not be need any uh, further uh, alterations in the future. So in this way. Okay, let, uh, me, let me ask you on this though. So to schema is the idea of saying, here's how the data is gonna come in. Um, I need to define what are the different fields. Um, I also need to define what is my primary, um, the primary ID and secondary ID. Um, and, but things change over time. So why is it important for me to finalize the schema before I even bring any data in? Like what happens if I decided to say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna change the data coming in. Um, how would that impact my schema? Yeah, so uh, without analyzing all this data, I created the schema. Uh, it's just not a, like, you know, little data. It's a, it's very, very big data. So uh, like in millions of data is like, you know, so we are terabytes and petabytes of data is loaded into an Adobe experience platform. So one in a point of time, I wanted to remove a field which is not required or I, I want to modify the type of uh, that particular uh, field. So which uh, distract the already existing uh, data. So will not allow any destructive uh, changes into the schema. So okay. without destructing the data, we can ingest something into a schema that is fine, but which distracts the already existing thing, which, uh, which collapses the whole uh, schema and the data already uh, in the Adobe Experience platform. So that- Because you have historical data that has been brought in based on that yeah. schema. So if you're gonna change that schema you either need to re-ingest that data. I mean, you can always add to the schema, right? I'm assuming you can add new fields, but yeah. you cannot, like at the end of the schema, but you cannot remove fields from the schema. Remove the fields from the schema or changing the identities, like identity fields already uh, defined. So which is, that's what I'm telling that phrase, like destructive changes are not uh, encouraged in the Adobe Experience platform. So, okay. so that, uh, while creating the schema itself, we can think of what the data is, what the different relationship between the data and how it will be related, what are the identity fields. And uh, so in this way, you can uh, build the unified profile, which gives a better uh, solution to the uh, onboarding uh, data or companies, okay. organizations. That's great. So let's actually, I'm going to come back to you in a bit uh, to talk a little bit more in details about the primary and secondary identity and such, but I want to switch to Brad. So Brad, you know, you're, you're the best data scientist. I know one of the smartest you, people man. and you know, I, I, I have a PhD. So I, I take, I say like, you know, I, I know how to talk and I'm technical, but once you start talking about these things, I am just lost. So you're the smartest person in the room today. Um, and you're actually creating some amazing models and going beyond the common logical audience segments that, that I come up with to say someone who come to the, came to the site and did one, two, three, um, you're actually coming up with some data driven audiences. How, tell me about how has been your experience doing that with data science workspace and maybe give your perspective of what is data science workspace. So if any of the data scientists sitting uh, watching us today, they will get an idea of what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> basically all the data science workspace is, is a, um, <clears throat> a Jupyter notebook built on top of cloud compute resources. So uh, any data scientist is gonna be familiar with these tools and how to use them. One of the beautiful things, and you kind of alluded to this in your intro is to have a, a data science workspace in the same place that the all the data in AEP actually lives. What that allows you to do is use query services, basically to SQL, to pull data directly out of all of your different data sources and stitch them together. Um, from there, you can just do your basic, you know, exploratory analyses, uh, do some visualizations and things, 
and then of course move into uh, constructing a model. Once you have a, some sort of machine learning model built that, that you think is going to be effective, is accurate, uh, then there's a just a, a fairly simple, straightforward process to build a recipe. And that is uh, in AEP, they have specific classes that you have to build in Python, which are just basically functions, programming functions. Um, and once you have those built, there are just a couple of uh, steps to test and train the model and then package it all up basically into a container. And then you can launch it as a scheduled service. Um, so it's really a fluid and efficient way to not only access your data, but build actionable models on it. Yeah. I've, so you and I have done some, some stuff where pre-AAP, and we actually published a case study on that, where we pulled data from Adobe Analytics, from the DMP, we brought in some email data, we brought into an environment and we, we put it all together and start building these clusters. And based on these clusters, we took them, pushed them to the DMP. We did some programmatic advertising, targeting. We also did onsite personalization. And it worked, but it was a hell of a project. I mean, pulling data from analytics, volumes, it just takes forever. Um, I'm assuming AEP, you don't have to pull any more data. Data is there. As long as Hari does his job and makes sure that the data is clean and and I'm assuming you need some, you need, I don't know, 12 or 18 months of data, but this is exactly where you can do everything you need to do. Yeah, yeah, no more trying to pass data around between 50 different sources, right? As long as, uh, you know, your version of our Hari has done a good job setting up your schemas and getting the data sets in cleanly, which Hari always does, uh, you're, you're all set, it's all in one place. It's basically one relational database that holds all of the data across all the sources that you care to ingest. Amazing. So what about like for, for some of the modeling that you do, how, talk to me about like how many data sources would you recommend having? We, we, we've been talking about you can bring anything into the system, but at the same time, we know the challenges where another department within the company might say, well, this is our data. We're not, we're only going to give you some of it. Um, and also the volume of data to bring in. What's your, what's your recommendation? Well, more data sources is always better, right? So uh, you can get some glimpse of your customers or visitors behaviors through your uh, Adobe Analytics data, right, specifically. Um, but if you start tying in CRM data, transactional data, demographics, uh, you know, even third party data, whatever you have access to, once you start tying all of that in, you start to get a more holistic uh, picture of the behaviors and attitudes of your customers. And that allows you to build more powerful models, more actionable models, right? Um, as far as uh, time goes, you know, you said 12 to 18 months, I think that's generally about right to, to as kind of a, a baseline for really having an understanding of, of customer journeys and things like that. Uh, but it's always use case dependent, right? Your mileage may vary depending on the type of model that you're building. You know, some very simple things, you may only need a week's worth of data if you have high enough traffic volume to your site. So really just depends on your use case, um, but always more data sources more data is better and AEP gives you a really good way to work with all of it. Amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm happy to hear your perspective on that. All right, so let's switch topic again. I wanna go to Bupen. Uh, Bupen, you and I started early on talking about the Adobe IO and Adobe APIs and I always confuse these two together and you always correct me. Um, so why don't you like give us a little bit like an overview of like, you know, what is Adobe IO? What are the APIs? We know that Adobe APIs are not new to the, to the game. Adobe APIs were always there, but they've been through like a revamp. Um, Adobe is doubling down on, on APIs. Uh, so give me your perspective. You've been spending a lot of time in building these integrations and doing some cool stuff. You're on mute. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So APIs, um, if I have to just put an API in a perspective, it's just way as to retrieve the data from any kind of service that is, that is offered. So in this particular case, we have AP platform, which um, give you a service of CDP base, basically. So it's an offering and then API just way to retrieve that data using a RESTful channel. Versus if you talk about Adobe IO, Adobe IO is basically the ecosystem or a platform that they provide it for the partners and developers to integrate, to customize, and to extend the product of 
across all ecosystem of um, the Adobe products, not limited to only AEB. So I can have custom, custom events created. I can have custom integrations created. I can have XD plugin created within Adobe IO. And it will give me a workspace where I can just go ahead and write my custom code because AP is covering most of that stuff, but you still have some kind of limitations where you cannot fulfill all the needs of a customer. So if you want to do that, you have a best uh, platform of Adobe IO. The other advantage is when you try to build a custom solution, then you have to think about uh, infrastructure in your own setup within your own organizations. But what Adobe has done is they have given you uh, Adobe IO runtime, which is a serverless infrastructure uh, created for you. So what you have to do is you have to just have a developer who can write a code in their own language, means Node.js is preferred, but there are multiple languages supported. You can write it like, I mean, are we talking like Java, Python? Yeah, Java, like .NET, PHP. So you can have okay. multiple languages created there and you just write your code and then simply go and integrate in Adobe IO. And you don't have to work, think about okay, how, how I'm gonna scale this application, how much uh, the throughput I have need to put it. You don't have to care, work on the, those things. So it's just- Because it's serverless or yeah, serverless why? why? Mm. So Adobe IO is the primary contributor for uh, OpenWhisk. This is the Apache Foundation platform, uh, which is basically a serverless container-based uh, uh, functions means where it executes the functions only. So you would simply write functions that can be triggered by events. So you say, okay, I have an event. Um, for example, Hari say that, okay, this data has been ingested in AEP right now. So we can have an event created for data ingestion in AEP, which can trigger a runtime job, a Adobe IO runtime job in Adobe IO and which can send notifications to multiple people. So you want to, you can have these kind of use cases get created. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about, I mean, what, what, what would it take for me to get into that? Like, do I need, like from tokenization, getting access and such, like I, I'm, I'm not a developer. You're the expert here. Like how much work is that? For, for people to get started with Adobe I.O.? Um, so to start with Adobe I.O., you, what you need is you need your Adobe ID first within your organization. And then you have to become a developer. So in the Adobe I.O., uh, there is some kind of uh, roles that have been defined for every user. So you have to- A developer, a not like added as a developer to the organization. Yeah. So Got it. Okay. whatever your role is, it doesn't matter. Means uh, Adobe IO has a some certain kind of roles that has been defined to do the work. So you assign yourself as a developer, and then you have to you have to integration with the product line of Adobe. For example, you want to access APIs for AEP, then you have to assign that yourself as a user to the AEP. Mm -hmm. So once you do that, you have created a channel that okay, you are a developer in Adobe IO, and now you are integrated with AEP. So essentially, essentially what you're trying to say is that I can access AEP APIs now. All the Okay. And when we say Adobe AEP APIs, I mean, we because can create segments from outside of Adobe. Yeah. You know, we can, we, can, we can build our own way of creating segments. We can, like what, what else can you do? I'm assuming you can do everything and anything? Most because the Adobe IO, Adobe has shifted from last two years they have shifted their base to API first approach. So when they build any kind of platform or any kind of product solution, their approach is it has to be API first. So they build the right. API ecosystem around it first. So AEP is the greater, a great example where you can do anything. You can access your data science workspace, your identity, your data sets, your segments, your journal, your query services. So what are the things that you can do in your policies basically? your XD profiling. So all kind of things are available via API. Okay, okay, that's great. We're gonna come back to, to APIs, but I want to take a quick break and just answer some of the questions that are coming in. Um, so, so we have a few questions, let me just go through them. Jeff asks, uh, how are you guys dealing with the end of third-party cookies? 
Okay, this is it's a great question. Um, this is not AAP specific. Um, the quick answer to you is we're not dealing with it yet. Uh, there is a lot of different ways that organizations are trying to uh, prepare for it. Uh, we actually, one of our first webinars uh, was about the demise of the third party cookie. So I, Jeff, I recommend you going uh, to our site uh, and, and search for, for our webinars uh, or search for demise of third party cookie. There, there's a recording and also there is a uh, discussion we had. We brought two people into our panel, um, current clients of Subcrylic who are very worried about that. Um, the idea, in the short, just to answer that, the idea is to double down on first party, but also with first party cookies, there is the, the concern that Chrome and Firefox might move the same way that, I, that ITP is applied on Safari. So uh, end of the day, I think there, there's gonna come to, to happen as an agreement of an ID that is universal. Now, who wins that battle? Would it, would it be Adobe? Would it be LiveRamp? Would it be a collection of uh, the other guys from, from the programmatic? It's really hard to say. And I see Sammy just posted the, the link to, to that webinar. So I highly recommend you watching it. Next question from Pankaj. He has a bunch of questions for me. So let's, let's, let me go through them quickly. How about ingesting data from ERP system? Is it real time? It really depends on your ERP system. Uh, I think uh, the idea that, as Bupin was talking about, APIs, uh, and also there is Adobe has this uh, data pipeline where you're able to stream the data in. Um, so I would say, yes, it should be real time, uh, but we will need to see what is that ERP system. Next question, the applications which are required to use the data from platform, are they mandatory by Adobe Experience Cloud or can you use Salesforce Marketing Cloud and consume data from AP? So the beauty about the platform, and you know, I have to be, be honest, like I had my doubts first to say like, yes, Adobe is just building this to sell more Adobe products, but truly Adobe has built this to service everyone. So you do have native integrations today with Adobe tools. Uh, you have some native integrations with outside of Adobe. And when I say native, it's like, it's built in within the platform. But for any others, you using the API, what, what Bupin was, was talking about, the ability to, to have this open API platform, you are able to create any of the integrations. So you can as simple, let's say with Exact Target or Salesforce Marketing Cloud, you wanna drop data on an FTP, uh, then you can just use that, drop it on FTP and let Salesforce pick it up. Or you wanna drop it into an endpoint that get picked up by Salesforce, same thing. Salesforce, even within their ecosystem, they're not as API um, friendly compared to what Adobe is offering. But I think both of these companies are working towards that architecture. All right, next question. How about Sensei now? Where does that sit in the new setup? So Sensei, I love that word. Sensei, think about it, it's not a product. It's a collection of data science tools. So Sensei back in the day used to be mostly lookalike modeling used to be cohort analysis, used to be attribution. And now Sensei is like grown up and have data science workspace and has attribution AI and has um, journey AI. So Sensei is here, uh, it just has more capabilities. It, it didn't go anywhere. Hey Jerry, can I add one thing to that? Yes. yes. Sensei, there, <clears throat> Sensei has an API in data science workspace, Pankaj. So if, if you wanna call Sensei from data science workspace with all your other tools, can do that now. That's great. Awesome. All right. We have an anonymous uh, whose question is, you mentioned earlier that real time could mean seconds or minutes. Could you explain what in is seconds versus minutes in AP real time CDP? Okay. So one way to, to explain this is that I am not a believer that everything, that things need to be real time. Uh, I've been doing this for some time. Um, I've been on the client side. I've been on the customer side have been on the consulting side. The idea that you need to hit someone with the real, with the right message at the right time, with whatever that right thing is, doesn't, for me, it doesn't prove that that's the only way to do it. What's important though, is to make sure that you are in tune with your customers. So 
when you are communicating with them, you're communicating with them knowing exactly where they are, where they are in their uh, shopping journey or where they are in their, uh, they're having a rough day or an escalation with, with your product. So uh, when, when we refer to seconds or minutes, it really depends on the destination, right? So, so for example, if you are sending data to email, um, if it is based on still on a file being exported and ingested by the email, uh, by the ESP, it's gonna be minutes or maybe hours. But in other cases, it can be seconds if we're using APIs where you are writing directly to a profile that is at the endpoint. Uh, but again, my, my point on that is don't get hooked and, and blocked by the idea things need to be real time. It doesn't really need to be, but you need to know what is the expected time for data to flow from one system to another? Questions are coming in. Let me continue. Um, in the ingestion process, are there limitations in volume or frequency of data being pushed to AP? Is the data ingested directly available to user? Hari, maybe this is a question for you. Um, from an ingestion, data ingestion, um, what is the limitation in terms of volume? I know me and you had, had some fun yeah. with, with some, some of that. Um, what would that uh, what, what is your perspective on that? Yeah, so there is a limitation of uh, ingesting the data in directly into an Adobe experience platform. It's one GB of data it can able to ingest at a time. So if it's more volume is coming, we have to split the data and then uh, we can we have to ingest, ingest it. Okay, then let's, let's talk actually, let's take a break from the questions. We'll come back to them. Um, but I know that Sometimes you, you try to bring the data in and it fails. Um, an overnight, you know, overnight file get, fails. How do you troubleshoot? Like, what is your recommendation? What do you see in ways that you're able to troubleshoot the data within, um, within AEP? Yeah. The first thing is like uh, the ingestion fails, uh, which is having the, uh, the UI, uh, Adobe Experience Platform UI is having uh, logs in it. So go to the monitoring section of the Adobe Experience Platform. You can see the logs and you can find out what's the reason uh, it got failed because of a particular field or the file type, whatever so. So we need to find out the log first and find out the list of uh, exceptions it's occurred during the ingestion. And uh, so once you get that, based on that log file, we can go to the file and fix it. So what is the error? Example, uh, there is a required field in the schema, but in the file, a lot of null values and uh, blank values are there. So while ingesting the data, it definitely throws an error saying that you have the required field or identity field, which is having the null values. So which is not supported by Adobe Experience Platform. So we'll go and fix the file or like you'll get the new file or something else. So based on the logs first, we need to look into the data and what is the exact problem? What is the solution for that. So example, there is a, a date field in the uh, file. So the date field uh, coming to the flat file or a CSV file, which is like a string, uh, it's considered as a string. While uh, like mapping the field, so the date field uh, could not accept the string value. So in that case, we need some casting of data. So which throws an error on seeing the thing like, you know, uh, the input source is a string and our schema is a date. So there is a mismatch in the data too. You can go ahead and then uh, do some kind of casting in the mapping of data during the ingestion. This way, uh, the most of the errors, you can uh, catch it in the monitoring uh, section of the data ingestion screen. Okay. And, and then one thing that I remember we had to, to do was not only if there was a problem, but if we brought in data for us to just make sure that identities, you know, and there is the volumes that are being pushed are being merged properly. Uh, we're provi providing the right merging rules. Um, how, how do you validate that? So would you look at specific profiles and just see for a specific profile, what are the attributes and, or um, like, how do you sample just to know? Because like, okay, I, let's say take an example, Adobe Analytics, it has a direct connection. So it's something where we just enable it and then data will start flowing in a few hours. But then let's say I'm one of the fields in Adobe Analytics is an EVAR, which is a customer ID. 
and that's going to be my primary identity. So I went ahead and I added it to the profile. But then I brought in my ID, my, my let's say my own CRM, which is keyed off that particular customer ID. And I feed it into the system. It's the same primary ID. How do I validate that actually this merge is happening? Like what, how do I, do I just trust the system or there is ways for me to validate that? Uh, the basically like the validations are, are done in the different uh, environments first. We should have the environments to do all these validations first, uh, instead of directly putting into the production environment and putting directly into the data. So we should have some development or uh, sandboxes. Uh, we should like you know put in the data, and you should do you should do the validations on that. Uh, so while doing the validation, you have the different identities are set. So based on the identity, go to the unified profile uh, section of the Adobe Experience platform. You can pass that identity value there. So which gives all the attributes for that particular uh, field. Exa mm -hmm. uh, example, you said like, you know, CRM data, a uh, loyalty ID is the primary identity. So you can pass that to unified profile and see uh, the data is coming or not. If the data is coming, we can compare with, with our source and then see whether this data is matching or not. That way we can what about get... what? Yeah, I'm, well, but I want I want I'm more interested in knowing that data is stitching. Like, would it? Should I run queries? Like, do I run queries using query service and say, "Hey, how many of the IDs that are coming in in source A match to IDs in source B?" Yeah. Is would that be a way as well? Yeah, that we can do it. Uh, either way, like you know, so you can use the query service UI is there. Uh, from there, you can. Uh, a match the stitching the values between the two different uh, sources or multiple sources that will that way it will do or else you can go for the api as uh Bhuban mentioned and we can get the data and match the records and uh, the way is like you know uh, different uh, ways are there so the simple way is like you know go to the adobe ui and you have the query service that is there and there you can stitch the data and find out uh, the matching between the two different data sources okay um, so that's great. So actually, Bupin, let me ask you. So with the API, if I want to use the API here, is there any limitation around how much data I can I can pull in for for doing some of this validation? You're on mute. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So there is a, there is some kind of limitations that right now we have in place. Uh, not sure what future like uh, Adobe might have. Uh, remove those restrictions means you can have you can have query services api where you can bring the data based on the limits uh, you can go i think hundreds thousands because the whole idea is uh, of uh, querying any um, data sets within the ap workspace is you are trying to extract the data which is already defined modeled properly and then um, everything has been done you are using that data for your own integration so Let's say you want to bring a model data that is already there based on the injection process that has done. You bring the data into your own system. So you because you don't want millions of rows of data in your own system because it's already in the AP workspace. It's basically redundancy in the data. So there is a limitation on that. But because it is outside the ecosystem of the a, um, Adobe. But if you are using a data science workspace, and trying to retrieve the data from the data sets, there is no limitation because we are within the ecosystem of Adobe. So there yeah, is- That's no great. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right, Brad, back to you around uh, data science. Um, how important is for you as a data scientist to get the right, so, okay, so if I'm a data scientist, which I'm not, but if I was, I want to make sure always I'm working with data that is clean and clear and up to date. Um, what would be, how important is for you that documentation, what kind of documentation would you be looking for? Like, are you able to go into AEP and look at the schemas and know exactly what's in there or Hari needs to get you something so that you're, you can really do your job like, like more uh, effectively? So the schemas are somewhat clear once you understand what they're telling you. Honestly, the entire schema data set system was a little bit counterintuitive to me at first. I didn't really know what was going on. I went to Hari, Hari straightened me out, and then it makes sense. So as long as you understand how the schemas are being created, then poking through them um, gives you a lot of information. 
Now, there are cases, though, like Adobe Analytics, where your schema is just going to say, you know, EVAR 90 or whatever. So you still need an SDR, right, so for, for something like that in order to figure out what the variables uh, actually are. Um, and then there are some cases where you can have fields that look like they're populated in the schema, but you go to run a query and it chokes because the field was never um, populated. Uh, but generally speaking, documentation, SDRs, uh, and, you know, any kind of uh, ERD that you may have, and then just go through the schemas, make sure to work closely with your data ingestion team, and they'll, they'll, they'll keep you on the right path. That's great. Cool. All right, so let's go through a few more questions. I know we're approaching the one hour mark. This is this has been great. And I know, I mean, we're barely touching on some of the things that AP offers. Obviously, we're, we're not talking in detail about some of the other tools, but hopefully in the next time. But let me get to some of the questions. Um, how does the end-to-end -end integration works real time? For example, data from analytics, CRM, Onyx Manager, how does it fit in a serverless design? Um, I think in the idea with the unified profile is that it is updated in real time. So um, as data is coming in, uh, depending on how it's coming in. So for example, Onyx Manager analytics, this is directly coming in from the, as data is co collected, processed, and then feeding into the profile. You should actually, you should be able to see within AEP how often that data is being loaded. Um, I can't remember, I don't know, Harry, do you remember like for analytics, is it real time or it's being loaded like hourly? Um, I can't remember the, it's, the it's setup. Hourly. It's hourly. It's hourly, okay. But there is, I'm sure, um, there is the option to use the Adobe live stream to, and use that data uh, and these events to bring into into the, yeah. the Unified Profile. Streaming um, transition is so Adobe Runtime. Yes. Um, Adobe, run time. say it again? Runtime. Adobe IO Runtime um, infrastructure to have a real time update. If you okay. really. That's great. Next question, does Adobe have kind of sandbox to play, for example, integrating Adobe IO, AET, and other products? Uh, you, I mean, not exactly. Uh, obviously, you know, it's a very expensive product, so they're not going to be just giving out sandboxes. Um, there is, my my advice would be, if you are a client who are um, really thinking about AEP um, and you have more than one solution with Adobe, um, make a case that you want to, to get access to a sandbox. Maybe you, you might be able to do a POC. If you are um, a developer, if you're a company like us, like an agency who wants to build some solutions on top of AEP, um, there, check out uh, Project Firefly. Uh, that could be a possibility where um, they might give you access to AEP to build some applications. Uh, so these are, are two things I would recommend. Uh, question from Vivian, what about data privacy? Could you explain how this works with AEP, how it's set up for highly sensitive data? Yes, so um, Adobe is big on this, is very big on data privacy. Um, every data source you bring in, you actually have uh, access controls in terms of what is this data. You need to define what this data is. Uh, Vivian, if you're familiar with like Adobe Onyx Manager, there's these um, uh, export controls where if data is gonna move from one system to another, you really need to define what is this data? Does it have PII? Can you do on, on site personalization, can you send it to ad server? Very similar uh, happens with AEP. Hari, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, yes, Sajay. So, the, uh, as per the data privacy, the data governance is like created by in the three uh, uh, like aspects one is the labels, policies, and enforcement. So, the labels is like classify the data in uh, reflects the privacy related uh, consideration, like, you know, uh, what is the data is. Like example, there is a, a data label C, which uh, tells about the contract obligations, uh, contractual uh, obligations between the data and the identity related data are labeled as I. And then the sensitive data such as like, you know, uh, geographic data. So which is labeled as yes, yes, uh, it's labeled. So based on this, like, you know, while creating the schema itself, the data governance labels will be assigned to each of the fields based on that. So uh, the data is safe uh, inside the Adobe Experience platform. Example, there is a identity marked as I. 
So you are sharing this data into a third party uh, data and comparing something. So which definitely, definitely raise an alarm that you are uh, like, you know, that a governed data is like uh, uh, merged with some other third party data. So immediately uh, the auto platform will alarm the particular organization. They will make the necessary actions on that. So the data governance is very important role in the Adobe experience platform to make sure uh, the uh, customer data should not go without uh, any um, information to the organization. So this way, uh, label the uh, particular uh, data using this uh, governance policy. That's a good point. Thank you. Thank you for the details on this. One more so thing. I don't even know the details. Yeah, go ahead, Bupen. One more thing. I just want to add in this that you have to go in AP workspace and define the policies mm -hmm. uh, to enable those kind of uh, enable those kind of data center failures. How you mark the labels, how you mark the um, actions, and what you can do with those data. So you have to define those first. So you have That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So that should be part of the the art, the design of and knowing exactly what we're bringing in, how we're bringing in it, how we're bringing it in, what we're going to do with it. So having the right rules in place. Okay. Um, another, and I think it's one of the last questions. Um, there might be some in the, in the chat, but one of the questions is, is the casting of Adobe done in AEP or outside? Can you transform the data during or after the ingestion AEP? Uh, Hari, I know that there is this data prep um, when you're doing mapping, uh, where there is a bunch of uh, functions that can be used. We recently played with one around changing the case for some of the identities. Um, but beyond that, and I don't know if you if you remember all the different functions, but beyond that, is there any type of transformation that can be done for the data coming in? You mean data preparation, right? So, yep. yeah. So the data preparation is like, you know, uh, there are three uh, bullets needed. First thing is then um, align the teams in common. So align the sources in common. What are the sources in common? Uh, example, there is an Adobe, uh, uh, like Adobe Analytics data. So different Adobe sources are coming in. So first align all the sources and then uh, so implement uh, some automated governance process to get those data into an Adobe experience platform. Manage all those uh, data in centrally in the Adobe experience platform. Uh, this way we can prepare the data in the Adobe experience platform. So why do we need align the common uh, things like common taxonomies? Uh, is like you know we can identify uh, the ide identities of each and every individual taxonomies and make that stitch together in a proper way. So otherwise uh, there is a disconnection between the different sources uh, which will not give the unified profile. So to make the unified profile better and uh, give better results, in order to make that you can. Uh, find out the common uh, taxonomies and based on that you can lay out some uh, govern ETL process or like you know some automation process to fetch the data and it should be managed inside the uh, Adobe experience platform. So this is why uh, like you know preparing the data in the uh, Adobe experience platform. So once the data is prepared so next step is like you know we can schedule those uh, data and in uh, like you know weekly, daily or hourly so it automatically get ingested into a, a particular data set. So this way we can prepare the data before uh, like, you know, ingesting into a particular schema. We need to prepare in the way of what are the commonalities between the data and how it is related. So how this will be automated and managed inside yeah. the Adobe experience platform. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I know there's a few more questions, but we are on top of the hour. I need. I need to be respectful of your time, but also our panel who do have other client meetings to attend. Uh, I want to say thank you all. Thank you to Brad, Hari, Bupen. I, I learned a lot. I hope the people who attended learned a lot. Um, we're going to have this. This is recorded. It's going to be posted on our site. Uh, if you registered for this webinar, we're probably going to get a follow-up email giving you the link. Uh, again, on 11.11, 11, um, so in a few weeks from now, we're going to have second part bringing in uh, the one and only Dave Bilbro from Adobe to talk a little more about architecture. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us, um, info at softcrylic.com, I believe. If not, jhello at softcrylic.com or on LinkedIn. Uh, thank you guys and have a wonderful Wednesday and rest of the week.